What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Falmouth. Chris Chavez here with Kyle Merber, and for 30 plus hours during the World Championships, took a little bit of a break to recharge the batteries, but track's not over, Kyle. That music right there just brought back <laughs> such like a wave of nostalgia for me. I felt yeah. like we were back in Eugene uh, interviewing people for four hours a day. Yeah, so we're here in Falmouth, Massachusetts for the 50th running of the Falmouth Road Race, but the fe running festivities really get started right now with the uh, Falmouth Elite Miles. We've got two wheelchair miles on deck, then we've got some high school races, and then it all gets capped off by uh, the professionals running today. So Kyle, what are you most excited about with those pro uh, fields that they've assembled here? All right, first off, it's 83 degrees yeah. out. A little we're, breezy. We're in a shed somewhere. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm sure it's going to be even hotter on the track. So yeah. the the elites have their work cut out for them. But the thing is, in a mile, not that bad. Makes the track nice and bouncy. We're going to be we've seen people run fast here before and it's not too breezy out. Um, you know, I think one of the things I'm most personally excited about is some of the meet records. Yeah. So y when you've said that people have run here fast before, now that's a little bit of a humble brag here because we get the chance to have a yeah, two-time you know, mile champion you know. here. So, Kyle, I guess speak a little bit to your experience racing here at the Falmouth Mile. Yeah, I came here twice uh, in 2014 and then in 2016. Okay. Um, undefeated, never lost a race here. And both really close battles. <laughs> close battles, good time. Um, in, in 2014, it was my first win as a Hoka athlete. Wow. So okay. that was really special. And um, and then 2016, Colby Alexander and I, who's in the race today, yeah. had like a crazy photo finish. And, you know, they gave it to me because I won. But Colby, for the last <laughs> six years, has been saying he actually won that race. I'm not in it today. I think uh, he's got a good shot to pull it off. The really cool thing about these mile races, too, is, one, a lot of prize money on the line. Like, it's it's part of the reason why, like, I think we tried to draw a little bit more attention to, to this race by coming out here and helping, you know, uh, broadcast some of the races because you know, there's over $25,000 with some good bonuses. The, Seriously. The, the course records uh, or the, the mile records are pretty tough, though. They're definitely tough. So first off, running through the prize money: okay. five thousand for the win, three thousand for second, uh, fifteen hundred for third, five hundred for fourth, two fifty for fifth. Bonuses: men's winner sub three fifty six, a thousand dollars. That's four thirty on the women's side. Any other men or woman under that barrier gets a five hundred dollar mm -hmm. bonus, and then the meet record is fifteen hundred. Okay. So there's you know potentially seventy five hundred dollars up for grabs for these athletes. That's a that's a solid payday that you could walk away from here with. So, uh, the other cool thing too is that uh, to kind of put it into perspective for the people watching or post worlds. Right now, there's a European championship going on. There's NACAC happening out in the Bahamas. Uh, we had the Commonwealth Games. At the same time, like this is the t time period in the season where it's a lot of uh, you know domestic miles taking place. And there's some of actually the most fun races to watch. A couple weeks back, we had the Sir Walter Miler. You had the Westchester Mile on Pittsburgh. Things really take off later on in the season. People cap their season with the Fifth Avenue Mile that takes place on the roads in New York City. So, Kyle, what do you kind of remember about these late season miles and like what they mean to these pros? It's you know it's an opportunity for redemption. Maybe yeah. you're the one who wanted to be at the World Championships and you're not there. And there you know there's money on the line, there's glory on the line. And if you can find a way to still get up for it, even in what is now like the postseason. Mm -hmm. You can really, uh, you know, resurrect a season that maybe wasn't going the way that you wanted it to. Similarly, you know, it's a lot of familiar faces that you've seen all year. Time to get your win-loss record uh, a little bit more fav favorable. But it, it's it's fun, it's relaxed, but it's intense. You know, you might warm up and cool down with the people you're about to race against, but during those four minutes when you're on the track, like everyone knows that they're seventy-five hundred dollars up for grabs yeah. and they want it. The other cool part to this is that while there's, you know, Americans uh, obviously competing here because this is right in their backyard, we've also got a big slew of uh, Australians tuning in. And what would you say? You check the time. This is a morning race for people. So if you're tuning in from Australia, good morning. Yeah, it's, I think, 7 a.m. in uh, Melbourne. So, yeah. you know, we've got a number of Australians here and we're whispering right now because it's the national anthem. I don't know if they can hear it on the stream or not. So out of respect, we're whispering. <laughs> the protocol do we talk through that no i think put your hand over your heart
I'm glad we. I, I think that was the right patriotic move. <laughs> yeah, that was good, good, good patriots over here. All right. So, so I think it looks like we've got the high school girls on the track right now. They should be a couple minutes away from getting started here. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about where we find ourselves in the high school season. They're not seniors yet. They're not juniors. That they're rising seniors, rising juniors. At this point, I mean, Kyle, I guess you being the high school star years ago, uh, what were you kind of doing in these weeks leading up? Because it's, it's right before cross-country season, an odd time to really try and run an all-out mile. Yeah, this is an interesting point in the season. I mean, of course, when you have a, a meet of this caliber in the road race, you want to participate in the festivities. But many of these athletes are probably in the middle of just base mileage. They're, they're running easy every day. They're doing strides, hills, maybe some far licks. Not necessarily the things that are going to best prepare you to come out here and rip a mile. So we are going to be cognizant of what their mile personal bests are and set the expectations, I think, relative to where they are in their season. Many of them probably about to start their cross-country official season training with the rest of their team uh, next week. Yeah. There's a lot of these runners, too, I think I think are fairly local to this area, just, just based off of some of the high schools that uh, I'll be reading off shortly but also like you know could just make a good weekend out of it too if uh your parents are running in the road race or they're co they're coming out for the, the like it's it's a nice it's a whole great family weekend that we've got here um at the falmouth road race something that's very fun that you know the elite athletes do and i'm sure the high school athletes do as well is it, it's like you still got to get your long run in tomorrow <laughs> yeah. after this and there's a, it's like a free seven miles at, to follow up the mile by going out and running with the masses you know long warm up long cool down get your miles in and uh it's it's you know it's fun right now a lot of these athletes probably are meeting up on the weekends for their mileage already and they're training local athletes you know that's always a fun aspect of high school running is it's who, who's in my area is running 10 miles because i know no one on my high school team was so i believe the fastest miler in this field is Lily Jin with a actually Ava Craniti with a 502 mile PR. You know, my favorite thing about calling some of these high school races sometimes uh, when we've done it in Kansas City uh, in the past is just sort of like uh, on the girl side is the quest to break five it, it is really fun and special. So we'll get the clock on the screen shortly to get going. And we will be underway with the Falmouth Track Festival. And they are off. All right, Chris, running through the field. Who do we have in it today? We've got Sarah Burke, who's a rising junior at Hingham High School. Ava Craniti, a rising senior at Lexington High School. Lily Jin, rising junior at Wellesley High School. Catherine Callahan, a rising junior at Acton Boxborough High School. Shay Podbelski, who is a rising senior at Norton High School. Leah Crisotti, who is a rising senior at Newton County Day School. Macy uh, Schreiner, who's a rising sophomore at Plymouth North High School. Amelia Everett, rising senior at Newton South High School. And Ava Bullock, a rising sophomore at Barnstable High School, which is on Cape Cod. So Amelia Everett, someone that we're really going to keep a close eye on here. She's run 426 for 1500, yeah. which is good. But she's run 206 for 800 meters, an exceptionally fast time. In a race like this, I guess, like how, uh, if the quest is to go, because this is the first time we'd get to see her actually in a flat, in a, in a track mile, because we, we don't have a personal best on paper for her. So uh, if the goal is sub five, 450 ish, how do you go about running that, Kyle? And, you know, I think they're doing exactly what they want to do as they come through in 76, 77 seconds. And that is Lily Jin up front leading Amelia Everett through. I think, you, you know, you want to, especially in this heat, 
you don't want to burn yourself too early. Mm -hmm. You want to keep your heart rate on that lower side of your threshold and then close hard when, when you know, just when you see the clock with 350, with 400 to go, you're still very much in it. And I think Amelia is setting up really well for that. And the question now is Lily Jin helping out or is it, you know, like, is this a plan? Yeah. Lily Jin, who's got a 226, 800 meter PR. She's run 1049 for two miles. Lily, a little bit more of the distance oriented athlete in comparison to Amelia. You know, it is in her best interest to get this pace going very early, keep it honest. But you do see Amelia continuing to swing on the outside. She's running a little bit of extra distance here. I could see her getting antsy at some point, especially if this pace lags in any way. So we're coming up on the halfway point of this race very shortly. And we've got a, a bit of weight back to the rest of the pack as they come through 800 meters, just a hair over five minute pace. 235-ish through the 800. So, uh, you know, they've slowed a tiny bit there on that second lap. And so I am looking to see if Amelia, with the idea of finally getting under that five minute barrier is gonna take over. It's lonely up there for Lily right now. She's been doing the, the brunt of the work, and these high school athletes don't have the advantage as a rabbit. And now we're going to have to see a pass be made here. And now it's up to Lily to respond immediately, as Amelia does, as you can see, make a noticeable surge as her stride, a bit longer in the pair. Get to have the wind blocked for you a little bit. They're coming up to 1,000 meters in about 3.13, 3.14, so... Very much still on pace for a sub 510. I don't know if that five minute barrier is gonna still be in reach. You cannot fall asleep here on this third lap. It's happened to me many, many times in my attempts to try and break five. Amelia now with 500 meters left has a couple steps on Lily Jin. The crowd hopefully understands the gravity of what she is attempting to do right now, can get behind her. As Amelia Everett approaches the bell with 400 meters to go, the clock reading 350, just as I had hoped, you know, a 70 second final 400 for someone with a 206 800 meter best, something certainly within her capabilities. And at this point, it does seem like it is her race to lose as she's pulling away from Lily, who is our early leader. Did a lot of the work at the beginning of the race. This back straightaway is going to be a lonely one for Amelia. And if she can just get a sense of how close it is. Grit the teeth and hold on. A quick look behind her. She knows it's her versus the clock now. And with 200 meters to go. You got a good group of fans back on that stretch. 429, 429. This is going to be tough here for her. At this point in the season, those base miles are adding up. You know, <laughs> what, what kind of kick will Amelia have left in her? We're sitting the, the, home the stage here. Here she comes. She sees the finish line well in sight. The crowd, you know her family and friends are going wild for her. It is all Amelia going into uncharted territories here in the girls' high school mile, the finish tape. Stretched about as her arms in the air, 506, 507. Let's wait for those official results to populate pretty soon. But one heck of a run for Amelia Everett, the rising senior from Newton South High School. You know the college coaches watching this <laughs> are excited. They're calling right now as the rest of our athletes come through just underneath 530. I don't know if high school athletes are uh, doing post-race workouts these days, but that cool down's gonna feel like one in this heat. One heck of an effort here. What a fun race. Amelia, probably. It's races like this where you just start to take mental note. It's you know a big win. It's a win at a big stage, and you, it's like, all right, maybe that's a name to remember for the you know upcoming cross season or the indoor season. It's like, and when when something like New Balance Nationals pops up during out there, it's like, oh, now I saw that coming. You know, for an athlete like Amelia, who is 
right now so much more, you know, s stronger in the 800 compared to our 1500. This is going to be a very important cross country season. You know, yeah. I think that there's this idea that middle distance runners, you don't have to run cross country, and that's that's not the case. This is the base miles right now that are going to propel her into the next track season. And so far in late August, it does look like she's already found fitness early. So the high school cross country season is looming. And so we're going to have those screens populating on the clock here momentarily. I think we're seeing 5.07.12 officially. 5.07.19. And then our early leader, Lily Jin, finishing second in 5.11.01. And then immediately straight into the award ceremony. And I believe we, we're going to have our high school boys next. So it's a rolling schedule here at the Falmouth Elite Mile Races. So we're expecting the pros sometime around 5 o'clock. Around 5 o'clock. Uh, so thank you for being here early, cheering on the high school athletes with us. The, the pros of tomorrow. You could be watching anything in the world, and you chose to be here with us at the Falmouth Track Festival. I wonder if anyone has ever won the high school boys mile or the high school girls mile and then gone on to win the professionals. We could look at the list of past champions, probably. And then a great battle up front. These two young ladies battling it out. I got to say, those steps the, on the podium <laughs> must feel so tough after an all-out mile. So beforehand, before we went live, Chris, we had an opportunity to see some big-time medalists out here talking to the crowd. Who's here? So we had Joan Benoit Samuelson, the OG, the GOAT of U.S. distance running, Dina Castor, the Olympic bronze medalist, and then Molly Seidel, the Olympic bronze medalist, all on a panel speaking together. They'll be in attendance at the road race tomorrow. Um, Really cool to see that, you know, arguably three of the Mount Rushmore uh, heads for U.S. Uh, marathoning up there. Um, and then tomorrow, actually, really, uh, you know, I've, I, this is my first time here in Falmouth for the road race or even for these miles. And, you know, every single photo that I've seen of the finish line area looks phenomenal. And I can't wait to experience it for myself when we do after the final lap or our post-game show because there's no laps in a road race, uh, tomorrow. We're not changing the sometime name. Sometime after, after the final lap. Yeah. Something that I think Falmouth does a really good job of is bringing back past champions and winners. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, you had the meet and greet earlier today with who was out there, Frank Shorter, Bill Rogers, Craig Virgin. Yeah. John Gregoric Sr. was just off to the side hanging out with A6. <laughs> I was like the speakeasy of meet and greet. Um, and, you know, it's... It's the 50th commemorative running of the Falmouth. You know, this, it started in 1972, I believe. Yeah. Um, and so 50th year of doing it. Like, this is a race that has been around for so long and I think is just a big part of American road racing culture. It came up with the boom of running following Frank Shorter's victory in 1972. And, you know, it, the, the list of names that have won or competed here... And something that shouldn't be lost on anyone who hasn't actually come here and run it themselves is, first off, it's hilly. That seven yeah. miles is not flat. And the other thing is, it starts at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And we're not in the mountains. Like, 9 o'clock in Cape Cod is hot. It yeah. is. 
it is humid, and so when you see these athletes going out there and running, you know, sub 430 opening That's miles, impressive. it's a long time to hold on in this. So the also the cool thing about a seven mile race is that you get a blend of some track athletes and then some people who are using this as part of their training for the fall marathons. And so uh, it's a clash of the titans. But if you ask Ben Flanagan, the two time defending champ. Uh, like who does this benefit he says it's a track guys race because it's like you get to the top of some of these hills and you find that you have this extra gear that's a you know faster than some of these other guys that they don't tap into as much so that's why he's won here twice and a lot of the pros are, are watching him tomorrow um the women's race edna kipple got last year you know came from behind to to, to win at 41 years old and you know she's not showing any sign of letting up so I think we're in for two really exciting races I believe it's going to be broadcast on NBC 10 um, so check your local listings and also check online for, for a live stream from them speaking of guys to key off on the track now we have the boys mile yeah who do you think the athletes are looking to right now once again we're throwing an asterisk on behalf of these kids that they're in the middle of base training they're not they're not mile sharp right now but who are we looking at yeah i i guess marcus riley is then is one of the names that stands out yeah. to me he was second here last year he's got uh He's run 345 for the 1500, which converts to about a, a 402. So um, I think a lot of eyes are on him. And, and then CJ uh, Sullivan, I think, also um, has been up there. 419, 158 for 800. So, um, But I think the, the, the odds on favorite here is Marcus Riley. Yeah, Marcus Riley definitely won. Uh, another guy, you know, I think when we're, when we're doing middle of base training sort of races, um, I look at their their two mile times and a guy like Brian Gamble who's run mm -hmm. nine sixteen for thirty two hundred meters. You know he's just naturally strong and probably muscle this out even if he hasn't been working out all summer. Look at this fellow looking like Jordy Beamish with the headband. Yeah, I know. I thought we had the pros on first. <laughs> These guys look legit. And here's Marcus Riley. I mean. I know that uh, we, we, we get a lot of guys breaking four minutes a mile in high school these days. I think Marcus is one of the guys who's knocking on the door to do it next, and potentially as a junior, you know, rising junior at Northbridge High School. So what are we at, 17 high school sub fours? So many. Only three spots left for you to get a graphic done on Sidious Mag. That's we, the official We've policy. officially made the rule that we will stop making graphics uh, if you are number 21 and beyond for breaking uh, four for the high school mile. The problem, you know, <laughs> it's... <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> no, no, I'm not... It, but the high school kids still get so fired up every time yeah, someone yeah. does it, you know, because it's your generation stud who's doing it. And there's, a, there's something about high school running that the guys who are... Or the girls who are at the peak while you're also in it, like you'll look up to them forever. Mm -hmm. Like those are the people you're aspiring to be. I mean, we like to talk about numbies that on uh, Instagram. Look at the the young brothers. Uh, anything they do gets numbies. All right, so quiet at start. And away we go. In lane one, Brian Gamble. Lane two, Will Liu. Three, CJ Sullivan. Four, Rithki Prakish. Five, Kofi Forger. Six, Alec Carew. Seven, Henry Gardner. Eight, Marcus Riley. Nine, Owen Comiskey. Ten, Marco Busson. And they immediately line up right away. And that's Marcus Riley who's just immediately going to the front. He's saying, you know, I don't need a rabbit. I've done this. I can do it again. But if you're if you're one of these other guys in the field, what an unbelievable opportunity to have someone of his caliber going out, setting the pace, something that you know you can trust. He's not going to fall off at any point. And you're just getting in line. You're staring at that back and just saying, take me to the promised land. Well, another thing, too, is there's sort of like you come away with a little bit of an upset win by taking him down, and you got that going into the cross-country season. It's a good sign of things to come. People will be talking about it's it. It's a serious opportunity that, you know, Maybe you don't get at the end of the season when a guy like this is as sharp as he can be. Maybe right now someone's having a really good summer. And so Marcus. Marcus is in third. Brian Gamble's in first. Oh, sorry. Leading the way. 
And so that's Brian, the two-mile man. You called it. 916 for 3,200 meters. He's also run 356 for 1,500, so about 413. And Kofi tucked in there at, in the, uh, second place as a rising senior at the Roxbury Latin School in West Roxbury. He's run 415 for the mile. They ran a, you know, that first lap a little bit more conservatively, coming through in about 65, 66 seconds. Uh, you know, that was kind of something that we talked about previously in this sort of heat. You do want to make sure that you have something left. Like, you can cross that line a little bit too early, a little bit different than you would see early spring or during the indoor season. Kofi making a little bit of a push here to maybe try and take the lead going into this second lap. And about 2.11, 2.12 oh, yeah, yeah. at 800 meters. Into the third lap, sorry. So for these guys, you know, they've been here before. They're, they're now itching and they're wondering, do I go yet? When is it my turn? And you can see... Kofi's Marcus, about to move to the front. Marcus is happy to just track these guys. Kofi does make a move, but Gamble holds him off. He says, I want the inside on this turn as we're approaching. Marcus looking behind him, see if it's just the, the three of them. It does seem to be with 600 meters to go. When was your favorite point to, to make a move? This is, I mean, for a strong guy like Gamble, this is the, the, the opportunity that you might gamble <laughs> on going from far out with wow. 500 meters left, you know, really string it, it out. If, you know, someone like Marcus Riley with a personal best of 150.1 for 800 meters, he, you know, comes at this from a little bit more of the speed angle. And so to make him hurt early is at your advantage. Is he going to try and take this wire to wire? I believe we're about 318 with one lap to go. I think we're going to see about a 60 second last lap if these oh. guys get going now. There goes Marcus Riley. And he's making a decisive move. He's saying, let's go. He was a couple hard steps and he's off and Gamble doesn't have the response. Marcus Riley no is one does. fully opening it up. And with 200 meters to go, he is rolling right now. You thought 60? Could be quick. I think we're going to see something absolutely unheard of here. He's saying that with 100 meters to go, this was my race. I was just having fun with you guys for the first 1,100 meters. Second place in 2021. He's back, and he's going to take the crown this year. Your boys found with Mile Champion celebrating as he crosses the finish line. That was a 59 last lap. Marcus Riley decisive in his victory, but a great sport congratulating his competitors. Thanking them for setting the pace, setting him up for a very, very fast close. I think we were like 27, 28 seconds that last 200 meters. Goodness me, that was fun. Get those guys some waters. We are definitely going to be keeping an eye on him this season. You know, look, 418. We know that he can do Leading that. into cross country season it's a good 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 uh place to be i'm just looking at how strong he looked yeah in doing that just completely in control he was clipping the the athletes heels ahead of him waiting for his opportunity it must feel so good to be like that like that dominant in a race <laughs> like the ego right now like my head would be explode you wouldn't be able to pick me up to go for a cool down <laughs> Marcus Riley. I mean, I don't know right now if he's even a better 800 runner. Well, I mean, uh, he did compete at New Balance uh, indoors last year like in that race that featured Cade Flat, Colin Salmon, Aaron Salmon. So uh, with some of those guys gone, I, I mean, Aaron Salmon will be a big problem for high, uh, high schoolers this year. But uh, no Cade, no Colin. Could he be the number two guy, number one? Possibly. That, that's kind of the exciting thing about high school running compared to the pros. So in high school, every year you just get these new breakout stars. And it's a new who's who, the new name. And compared to pro running where, you know, you kind of have the same people around year in and year out. And then they slowly, uh, you know, make their way into retirement. But Marcus Riley, 417.99 here. Uh, just a name to keep 
in your head as we think about who the next breakout star is this year? Yeah, it's like Gary who? Gary, uh, Gary who? The college kid? <laughs> <laughs> His high school races were fun. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned with some of these fans, or should I say participants in tomorrow's road race who are out here just hanging out watching, baking in the sun for a <laughs> solid hour beforehand. Are you concerned for them or yourself? You're, you're going to be uh, I, lacing up. I am. I am lacing up. I found out that the women and myself are fortunately not starting at the same time. I was nervous that uh, I was going to get my butt spanked <laughs> so um yeah no i mean this is just the precursor it's it's you you go through the the list of the names of some of the athletes that have been here so just looking at you know the elite all-time list and some of the names so first off the women's record is from 2002 Susie favor hamilton 425.27 it's quick you're gonna hear that a lot yeah you're going to hear that a lot. I mean, the time that's uh, withstood the test of, of many, many years. But at the same time, part of me is excited because Nikki Hiltz just ran 421 421 at Sir Walter. The, the one thing that is on my mind is whether they will have someone to push them to go that fast today. That's going to be the big question because at the Sir Walter, they had Eleanor... Fulton, Mm -hmm. up on the rabbits, keeping it honest. And the question now, once you've seen how good of shape Nikki is in, is anyone else in the field willing to do that work for them? Okay, let's play a little hypothetical here. If you were Nikki, would you offer up like, hey, if I if I cash that bonus for the like, what would you give a little bit off the top for them? Knowing that there's seventy five hundred dollars up for grabs. And knowing that you're fit and you benefit from a quick race, you know, I think saying to someone, hey, if you just take me out and run some 66s, I'll give you $1,000 regardless of how it goes. Yeah. Might be worth it. Could be worth it. Yeah. But, again, we, we're, you, that, that's we're just how speculating. you formally maybe would have done it. Yeah. Um, so just running through some of the other names who have been here. So on the men's side, that... That meet record is Charles Philibert Thibodeau, 352.97. The Canadian did that last year. To beat Craig Engels and Johnny Gregoric. Like, the names that is on this all-time list is truly incredible. Um, the women's race last year, Amy Eloise Markvik, 441. And they just went out and jobbed the first couple laps then closed it down and that's kind of what we're worried about happening again we, we don't want we want some fast times but you know I love a tactical race yeah um, other names Corey McGee is a past champion Josh Thompson Craig Angles, Rachel Schneider Hannah Fields Katie Mackey who's here today yeah now, Katie, Katie Follett um, you know she gave birth less than a year ago or about one year ago? About a year ago and has been uh, racing all season. I think started ba- uh, started back up again in April. Um, has run 420 for, for 1,500, but year. just keeps getting faster and faster. Um, the, Colby the, Alexander in 2016, is you. <laughs> in, yeah, in 2016, I won. Um, and then... There was no race 2014, but in, in 2015, but in 2014, Katie had won. So, you know, multiple back back. time champion. I won. In 2013, <laughs> Katie again. So this place has been good to Katie Follett. Ben Blankenship. Was supposed to come back, but uh, has made, I think, just other plans with his training at the moment. The late David Torrance is our 2012 champion, 355. Our dear friend, Brenda Martinez. The list of Olympians, is, it's just incredible. 2011. I remember watching this one. They did it under the lights one year. And Jordan McNamara ran 354. I mean, for those who are old enough to remember J Mac, he just dominated these community events. He yeah. Had a, and the, I mean, the crowds would go wild for him. He was a showman. I, I, I just hope whoever we see win here tonight can uh, run as fast as they as J Mac used to on his victory laps. <laughs> and so you know. Really, really excited for the field that we have. Do we have any bold predictions? Ooh, the safe bets probably would be Colby Alexander on the men's side and Nikki Hiltz 
Yeah, you say that is a, you know a safe bet. Colby ran 352 earlier this year. Uh, dealt with some injuries and has just been climbing back since USA's and getting better and better every single week. And I think the last couple that we saw him compete in, we got glimpses of that that winter form he had. Um, he's someone that we know can get in shape really quickly. But don't sleep on Jack Ancy. No. The he, Australian yeah. just it's, ran uh, his personal best in the mile in Westchester and looks really strong, keeps getting better and better, and is, uh, is off to a great start in his pro career. The one thing about, especially with you know, Jack Ancy being one of, I think, three Austra- or four, four Australians four Australian. in this race, is that you know, that's a solid four-by-mile team. Remember a couple months back when we were, everyone was talking about the four-by-mile world record? Now, this is, d- doesn't even include you know, someone like Ollie Hoare, who just won the Commonwealth Games. Like, Australia, four-by-mile pen relays maybe next year? Yeah, you know, I think that there's a lot of discussion between the U.S. and GB. Yeah, and, but, but don't sleep on, on Australia. Uh, and on paper, Australia is better than the U.S. right now in a yeah. four-by-mile. I'll say it. I think the U.S. Don't add them. <laughs> don't add them. <laughs> uh, yeah. The U.S., they're gamers. We're gamers. But on paper, the Australians really do have something special going on right now in the 1,500 in the mile. Yeah. So you've got your eyes on Jack Ancy. The chat was loving Jai Edwards. Yeah. Well, Jai, I mean, people forget. 2021. <laughs> people forget. It was, it was a year ago. He was the Australian champion mm-hmm. and had run 349, uh, ran 333, I believe, as well uh, for 1,500 yep. meters. And so, like, was completely on fire. Uh, you know, unfortunately, didn't have the year that he had hoped, but is now starting to round out and show that last year wasn't a fluke. That's still there. No. On, and then on top of that, I mean, like, the investment Under Armour has made into middle distance running has been super impressive because we've got, you know, UA Mission Run Baltimore represented here with Willie Fink and the newly signed Adam Fogg. And then on top of that, you know, you've got UA Mission Dark, Run uh, Dark Sky Distance uh, with Casey Knebelbard. Um So... Those, those guys also could be someone to watch. This is something I want to know. Are the various Under Armour groups friends or are they rivals? And what do I want? Like, the, I, if you're a Baltimore guy, do you see a Dark Sky guy and think, like, you know, Subway Series sort of rivalry, yeah. the long subway between the two? Should but do a dual meet. Uh, yeah. There should be a dual meet. Yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the Under Armour investment right now we're seeing a lot of new pros and adam fogg being one of them this will be his uh u.s pro debut because he's been racing in europe uh this summer great youtube channel i i actually watched a couple videos very entertaining fog dog fog dog shout out to him shout out um we must have some fog dog guys and girls in the youtube chat right now you know if you're willing to put in the work and uh Create content. Create okay. content like so let's, that. Let's, let's talk about your tweet from a couple days ago. We need other pros. We need more content creators. From the pros. But like not content creators in the sense of, I just ran 8 by K at 240. That's, you know. Give, giving advice. Giving really Good basic advice. couch to 5K type advice. Because right now, anyone with a phone who ran you know, the local 5K is out there giving terrible advice to everyone. And it's time for the industry experts that we have here today racing to, to speak to the, the, the masses and let them know how you really go from couch to, to 5K. 5K. Then we've obviously got to show a little bit of love for David Ribich. We have to, I guess. We're <laughs> obligated because we do love David. Um, he was second here a couple of years back. So similarly to Colby, like there's a couple runner-ups, uh, past runner-ups who are just like this. I want this to be my time. Last time he was here, his hair was terrible. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to be a little bit more aerodynamic this time around. Um, professional women's wheelchair athletes are coming up very shortly. And the this cool is going to be fast. It's going to be fast, and also like the very cool that. Um, all, all these athletes will be doubling back tomorrow for the seven mile race. Something that you know a, a lot of people maybe aren't aware of in terms of the history of the Falmouth Road Race, but one of the first you know major races to give huge opportunity to wheelchair mm-hmm. athletes, like years and years before, there was a, a quite a presence here. The wheelchair athletes who'd come out and uh, you know complete the seven miles. 
and you know, I think a little bit different when you're doing it on the road versus the track. These turns, I don't know how it's done. I'm, no, right. I'm ignorant on this. Yeah, it's because like we, when you see the marathon times and uh, that these athletes competing at the World Marathon Majors, it's like they're posting up times that are. Let's see, I'm trying to pull up. Uh, like 1.30 for a marathon. Like everyone makes a big deal about breaking two with the with, with the runners, but uh, you know, seeing someone like Susanna Scaroni going 1.30 at some of these majors, like that's that's quick. That's quick. So, I, but the coolest part to the wheelchair athletes is that the range that they can uh, yeah. compete in, because we've got uh, someone on the men's side like Daniel Romanchuk who competed in both the 400 and the marathon at the Tokyo Paralympics last year. Also, can we just give a, a quick shout out, especially in the chat, to Mac Fleet right now? Yes. I don't know, you know, we, we've done the trials of miles before in terms right. of streaming races on YouTube, but the thing that I don't think people realize is that we. That's hiring a production team. That was dishing out a lot of money for a production team whose professionals coming in and doing this. Today's production is a one man <laughs> <laughs> performance from our man Mac and you know the regular viewers of the Sidious Mag YouTube channel. We like to give Mac a hard time. But so far, going pretty well. I yeah, going pretty well. He hasn't <laughs> killed anyone yet. <laughs> We're hoping to do more s stuff like this in the future. It's been really fun. Um, so shout out to Mac for doing an excellent job. We're continuing to pray for him. And if you have a moment, please Share the link on Twitter, on Instagram, text it over to a friend so we can get those numbies up and hopefully do more of this in the future. Smash the subscribe button. You know, I think you can become a subscribe, like a paid subscriber now to the YouTube channel. We're also on Venmo. I don't think you get City's anything Mag. as a benefit. Not yet, but down the road, hopefully we can provide some exclusive content. Tax uh, write-off? To, to people. No tax write-off. No <laughs> exclusive content, Mac is telling us. There's nothing. It's a, do it's a dollar a month to support us on YouTube. So Mac the prize finally. money here for the wheelchair is $1,000 to first place, seven fifty to second, and third gets 500 And there's three competitors in this race, so everyone's guaranteed at least $500. That's really nice. I think if you can navigate these turns, you're deserving. And they are absolutely rolling right now. This is a sprint. I mean, I, I, I think these athletes have probably done a considerable amount of speed work compared to their marathon training to be ready for this. And so they are cruising right now, 200 meters on sub four minute pace <laughs> and only gonna get quicker and quicker here. Navigating those turns is the toughest part. So the 58 for the first lap. I Fresh think off the world record in the 10K at the BAA 10K earlier this summer. Susanna Scaroni. And so, you know, I think there, that first 100, it takes a little bit of a while to get your momentum going, but then once you're up, I think we're going to naturally see a little bit of a negative split here. As we come through 600 meters in 125. This is impressive. And Scaroni, all on her own, up front, approaching two laps to go. Last summer at the Paralympics, won gold in the 5K, and then bronze in the 800. 152. That was about a 53-second 400. So maybe we see a, a, a couple more of those. Where, where Do we have uh, any personal best or records on I don't have those on, on watch right, right now because she is only picking up steam here so just for you know the our in stadium announcer is commenting right now about the fact that this track surf is actually brand new and super favorable for these athletes. 
uh, to be able to, to roll on, you know, a little less surface area as she's now approaching Into 400 meters at 246 with another, it looked like a 54 second lap. So, well, I mean, I'm trying to imagine what we can muster up here with 300 meters to go. Scroni all on her own. Back in form. Last year, actually was training in the, on the roads in Illinois and collided with a car and so uh, suffered a fracture in her vertebrae and was out for the rest of the year. And so now, you know, this is, this is a good sign for this fall and the, and the, the major, uh, world major uh, marathons. Scroni doubling back tomorrow. Hopefully, you know, not has a, has a nice recovery routine planned for this, the back-to-back. -back. And the final looks like it's about 334. And that's one mile, a reminder. We're going to get the official time here, but what was it? officially 342. 342. <laughs> I, I'm faster on mine. Wow. We're waiting for the official results to pop up. I had faster on my watch. Did you say world record? <laughs> We're discussing the fact that it is under the world record. Wow. Oh, yeah, so 342 for one mile. That was fun. That was fun. And so to peel back the curtain a little bit, Mac, in addition to putting this whole broadcast together, actually had a little camera that uh, we were going to try and test out to put on uh, the wheelchair competitors. But unfortunately, we'll have to save that for another day. As the fans are cheering on our final competitors, Everyone sub five, Chris. Do you just have anything just to say in. to that? Just keep rubbing it in. You can see those flags flying. There, you know, there was wind, some serious wind there. No real opportunity to to tuck in behind someone else. You know, you think rabbits are helpful for athletes running, the wheelchair competitors probably get even more benefit out of yeah. it. Yeah, especially down the uh, home stretch here. All right, Chris. And we have one more race before the pros. The pros. Let's talk about that seven miler tomorrow. Are you excited? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, a lot of eyes right now when we're, we're considering maybe Who's going to win the races, right? Mm -hmm. Ben Flanagan, I favor it. But, like, the first time he won it, it was a real special treat, right? It was in a 2018. Unexpected. A little unexpected after his NCAA title, uh, where he unleashed one of the biggest kicks and you know at that point i think was still sort of trying to navigate that post collegiate life and what, what the next chapter was going to look like and so um the funny story what is it he met his future fiance yeah that, so uh, we'll definitely trip. talk we'll get the the first hand account from him but his uh you know he's ended up staying with the the president of the Falmouth road race mm -hmm. as this host family and he ended up you know Hitting it off with his daughter, yeah. who ended up being now, you know, girlfriend turned fiance. And yeah. so Ben is back. He's staying at his in-law's house, or yeah. future in-law's house. And you know, that helps because like any trip that he makes out here, he gets to run on the course. And so there's probably no one in this field who know, unless someone has, you know, obviously run this race year in and year out. We're in the 50th anniversary. A lot of people, there's a lot of people who have run this more than half the number of times, but but, you know, from the pro side of things, Ben is probably one of the people who knows this course the best. And so yesterday during, uh, you know, some of the preliminary press conferences was that 
you know, all the, the top men were just like, we're going to be watching Ben. And uh, so there's a little bit of, of pressure on him. Last, you know, last year when he won the title, he almost hurdled the finish line tape, chucked up the deuces. I asked him if he's got a celebration plan for number three. He wasn't ready to reveal those cards. He says, let's just make it to the top of the hill in first. And then it's, you know, that's when he can kind of start saluting to the crowd and, and, and soak it all in. And then but he's going to be challenged. It's not going to be easy. So three people kind of jump front of center in mind. So first off is Lenny Career, yeah. who we have seen win so many of the major road races. We're talking about the infinity stone of American road races. Lenny is well on his way, the former Iona athlete now competing for the Army. I mean, people forget just like how dangerous he was in those 2020 uh, U.S. marathon trials when he was charging home. That's the, 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 the memory I'll always have of Leonard Career, just sort of like in that final mile how hard he was closing uh, for third place and just missing that Olympic team and so you know he's hungry I think to continue to just rack up the wins on the on the road but last year he was I think in a tight battle with Bia Simbasa for uh, the U.S. ATF road racing circuit uh, title and so uh, he's another person to watch who finished second last year so but well, Bia also yeah. yeah definitely someone to keep an eye on Athanas Kilko is my kind of dark horse pick. Mm -hmm. And you, you might remember him from his days at Campbell University, yes. multiple time All-American, known for going out hard from the gun, was yeah. not scared to take it. The thing is, that works okay on the track. It works really well on the road. Like, someone who's willing to, to drag everyone along and make them hurt. Uh, Kilko was just second at Beach to Beacon as yeah. his precursor just like a week ago. And, you know, the, the Beach Beacon champ, Matthew Camelli, I do not believe is here racing. And so an opportunity for Kyoko to, to put a nice stamp on the start of his pro career. Another athlete, Wesley Kiptu. Yeah, you the, can't forget him. The Iowa State legend. I wonder if it, he'll be wearing gloves here tomorrow. Oh, that would be bold. I saw he's rocking a really nice mohawk. Uh, yeah. Uh, and he's been training uh, out in Flagstaff, Arizona, part of NA Hoka NAZ Elite now. So um, that transition seems to be going well for him. And then, you know, you have someone like Frank Lara, who last year ran into the front car. <laughs> the media car. Yeah. The media car, because he went out so hard. Typical Frank. And so, um, you know, Frank is someone who we are going to keep close eye on to keep it honest here. Mm -hmm. um, another athlete on the men's side that I'm, I'm looking out for is Zuhair Talby. It seems like every time we stream a meet, Zuhair is up at the front. It's the funniest thing. Yeah, I guess it started with uh, Texas last year and then Kansas City. And now, uh, you know, he'll be here uh, with the road race tomorrow. But... He was one of those athletes who didn't uh, was in Tokyo during the uh, Olympics and then got pulled uh, from competing just you know the day before the 10K. Really unfortunate situation, uh, but got to compete at the World Championships this year. This is uh, he's been training out by you. He's right? actually been training on my grounds. <laughs> I'm I'm working to work up, like get the courage to go for a run with him. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready. I, no. I know he, I've seen what he's doing. It's a lot faster than anything I can do now. Yeah. So that's the men's side. Let's let's talk a little bit about the women's side. A little bit on the women's side. All right. So I think the name that everyone of our American followers are probably well familiar with is Kira D'Amato. Yeah. Coming off an eighth place finish at the World Championships on on a short buildup. Getting ready on another short buildup for the Berlin Marathon. And so really what that kind of shows you is just sort of like when you look at, you know, these elite, uh, these fall marathons being announced, you've got, you know, a heavy American presence in both Chicago and New York. But Kira choosing to run the Berlin Marathon means that she might have the thought that she can take down her own American record and just lower it a little bit more. Um, Especially if she feels that she came off of the world championships well enough to bounce back into another race right now. Like, we're not seeing someone like Sarah Hall or, or Emma Bates racing just yet, uh, but Kira is. She ran 23 miles just like. And 10 miles today. And 10 miles today, because you know she's got, she's got Berlin. Um, but I think the two athletes that. The two or three. So, first off, Edna Kiplegat, you know, the mm -hmm. queen who has been doing this for so, so long, has won. There isn't, like, a major marathon she hasn't won. Uh, you know, defending champ. And we keep saying, like, you know, oh, she's getting a little older. She's getting a little older. She's not getting any slower. Yeah. yeah so we're definitely keeping an eye on Edna. But then also Fante Bellinay, 
mm-hmm. who was our Beach to Beacon champion. Not too long ago, yeah. And so you know she's fit. She's ready to go. And then also probably the final athlete that I think is like a real, real contender, and I, I want to do my best to get the name correct, Birkaya Estetu de Geffa. Mm-hmm. has won so many um, of the American road race circuit races. The crown jewels on that. You know that she wants to add it. And has, has really done very well at this, like, you know, there's not many seven-mile races out there, but it's done re- very well at that 10K distance mm-hmm. on the road before. So, um, you know, those, those are who I'm personally seeing as contenders. And now that I've come out and said all that, I know that someone else is going to win. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm... Pretty focused on the Ethiopian duo, Edna and uh, Kira, making this a quick one tomorrow. So now we're getting ready for the men's wheelchair race. And this one, I, you know, I've got, I've got my eyes on Daniel Romanchuk, who is a Paralympic gold medalist in the 400 meters. So hopefully we get a, good, a really quick uh, lap split here. And, and also took bronze in the marathon. Talk about some range there. Also finished fourth in the 800 and the 5K, fifth in the 1500. So he's a jack of all trades once he hits uh, the track. You do see that more in wheelchair than on the track. It's, I'll race whenever you tell me to. <laughs> yeah. Um, any distance, any time, anywhere. Uh, absolutely no fear. Well, what was it at the uh, uh, at the Tokyo Olympics because of quarantining rules? It was sort of that you had to leave two days after your event, but that's not a problem when every event is is your event. Yeah. Stay the whole time. All right, athletes on the line. This is a crowded field. You're gonna want to get out. Get out hard. Hold on to lane one. There goes Roman Chuck. Man, and Roman Chuck takes off. Roman Chuck right has an away. unbelievable acceleration at the start. He is gone, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Daniel Roman Chuck show on the City of Spag <laughs> YouTube channel. Let's get some lap splits, baby. I really wish we had our golf cart that went 30 miles per hour next to him for some perspective <laughs> of just how quick he is rolling right now. As he comes through 400, uh, 200 meters, just under 30 seconds, but I have a sure. feeling that that 400 split is going to be quite a bit under that four-minute barrier. So for the people who are watching this and may not be as familiar with Daniel, he, in 2018, he became the first American and the youngest person ever to win the men's wheelchair division at the New York City Marathon. Um, and then that's just kind of like the jumping off point for him. He's gone to uh, off to win uh, multiple world marathon majors at this point. So, Bacal, you're, you're 49. making a 49.3 is what I had as the opening 400. Wow. Talking, you'd want him at, on the first leg of a, a high school 4x4. Four four, you know, watch what happens the second lap. This is my favorite part about the wheelchair <laughs> racing is that we only get faster and faster. <laughs> And as he is ripping around the bend. Someone check his chair. He's got to have some sort of... Uh, <laughs> some nods yeah. over there. <laughs> this 800 split. Give it to me. 136. That was a 47. <laughs> wow. Again, like... No one get in his way. <laughs> you have... Like, for perspective, he now has almost 100 meters on second place, and he's just over 900 meters in. And he's going to be back tomorrow in the, during the road race, where he's got a chance to, to possibly uh, you know, capture his uh, third Falmouth uh, road race title. He actually holds the course record of 21.58 for the seven-mile race. With 500 meters to go, I'm not going to lie, he looks tired. <laughs> he's starting to look tired, and we're going to see... What he has as we approach 400 meters on the clock, the bell rings. That was a 49.0. He's the world record holder in the 800, by the way. We're going to have to see. Uh, you know, I hope my assessment that he was getting tired is incorrect. With 300 meters to go, Daniel, it's him versus the clock here. He's mustering it up. You know, of course, that straightaway is going to be a little bit faster than the bend, but with 200 meters to go, 251. 
Are we going to see a sub 320 here, Chris? <laughs> Everything that he's got. No, you got to save some for tomorrow, but. No, tomorrow is another day. <laughs> Daniel sees the tape stretched and he is doing everything he can to get there. On the clock, 315, 316. Wow. We heard this was a fast track. We heard, they said it, they warned us, Chris. Daniel Roman, check. Have yourself a weekend winning the Elite Mile. Get yourself a win tomorrow and leave Falmouth with a great payday. The double. So again, Chris, what was that payday for Daniel right there? $1,500 for the win? I believe so. It was $1,000 for the win. For the win. 750 for second and 500 for third. As the remainder of our competitors are coming through, trying to get that dip under a four minute barrier. How big is the wheelchair sub four club? The speed by which he handled those turns. And we'll wait for the results to come through. All right, now we see some of our elite athletes on the back straight away. Getting their final strides in. You know, Chris, something that you have no idea about that I'll share with you, okay, because I've me. seen you screw this up before. When it is 83 degrees out, like it is right now, you don't go warm up three miles. Oh yeah, you, you saw me There's do this There's something that you need to know. Ago. Like, you, these athletes probably shook out a mile and a half or so this morning. And they did some drills, and they're stretched, they're loose. But you, honestly, it's it's crazy to say some of these athletes are probably jogging 10, 12 minutes for the their warm-up. The warm up. <laughs> and it's not what you would get for many races, other times of the year. Definitely not before a workout or an indoor race where the, the battle is to get warm. These athletes are too warm. Yeah. The question is, how do I cool down? They probably did a couple leg swings, one stride, and it was like, all right, I'm good. You know, do, do a one or two long ones for good measure, and then it's a question of like, how do I stay cool? How do I stay cool? You're not warming up an hour before the race. That's a common mistake that you'll see athletes make. Wait, was this something you picked up po like post-collegiately? Or uh, I, I picked it up in college a couple times. You know, you go to the NCAA champs, and you know, the NCAA break. regionals was, always down in North Carolina, and it's hot. And so, you know, you, you get the ice vest, you see what the older guys on the team are doing, and, um, you know, the, the, you learn. That's how you do it. And then you get out here, and for these young pros who maybe haven't done this before, you do kind of defer to the vets. What mm -hmm. is Colby Alexander doing? Like, obviously, what he does works. So, um, you know, well... Again, I, I said this earlier, it is always very funny that these athletes end up going for warm-ups and cool-downs together before stepping on the track and vying for, you know, $5,000 to $7,500. But something that I think that the prize structure, and it, you know, the prize structure is really interesting psychology. And it's something that when I used to put on the Long Island Mile, I'd think about. It's because you don't want to discourage athletes from taking a chance and making it happen. Yeah. So, you know, the, the worst case scenario is you, you have $10,000 for the winner and $1,000 for second place. Then everyone's just going to go out and jog and no one wants to take it because everyone's just thinking about the $10,000 payday and they want to play it safe. The fall off from $5,000 to $3,000 is not quite precipitous enough to discourage trying to make it fast and honest with that bonus in mind, not just the meet record. Again, the men's winner is sub 356, gets $1,000, women's 430, and any other athlete who accomplishes that gets $500. So say you go out super fast, you're right on the rabbit's ass, you're keeping it honest, that third lap, someone comes up and they, they kick by you. Yeah. Second place, you'll still get $3,500. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's a good day. Back in my day, <laughs> you only got $3,000 for the win at Falmouth. And so, uh, you know, I think that the, the measures that are in place to encourage athletes to go fast, um, it's there. Another fun thing that we do sometimes that you'll see during the summer miles is like that, that 
mid-race bonus. Yes, the, pr the, the Prem. Yeah, it's super, super famous at Fifth Avenue. But the catch is you still have to break four minutes by the end of the race, right? Yeah, a lot of times, you know, there's still a, a barrier that you have to get under. So that way it's not just doesn't turn into an 800-meter race. <laughs> But that's a good way to incentivize. Who is the famous person who like went for it but then didn't end up breaking forward? Did Ford Ford successfully did it, right? I think no, I think Ford <laughs> failed. I think Ford just missed four flat and fell, and then it ended up going to like the fifth place finisher <laughs> yeah. who was just hanging out in the middle of the pack. Um and so yeah, you know, the psychology of the meet director is like, how do I convince these athletes to go as fast as possible? Would you ever consider doing it at a weird distance? Like, yeah, at the Long Island Mile, we did 13.09. Wow. So 300 meters to go. Because, you know, we had a rabbit, so there was no problem getting to 800 meters. Um, but then after that, it would really lag. So we said, you know, by giving just that little bit of extra incentive, uh, someone will step up. And oftentimes, it'd be like David Torrance or Charles Philbert Thibodeau who would go and make things continue to roll. And so you, we need those heroes yeah. in the sport. What's the biggest thing a first-year or second-year pro can take away from races like this that could help them, you know, because we, we, like, we talk about the Europe circuit a lot that is valuable when it comes to traveling out to those European races or um, hitting, you know, the international circuit. The, the big thing to take away for a new pro right now is how do I extend my season so late into the year? Mm -hmm. The first time that many of them are ever doing this. Yeah. And, you know, it's one thing to hold on to NCAAs, but it's a, it's another to keep it going week in and week out. And these like this is we don't talk. And I think it's fun for us to talk about the money because this is their jobs. Like, yeah. they're here to make money. They're not doing this to just shake hands and kiss babies. Like they want to, they they got to get paid. Yeah. And um, you know, so you're you're going wherever there is money, wherever there's a race. Get get on the plane and be there. And so the ability to do it again and again and again all the way into September is really difficult. And it's, a, it's an acquired trait, not only physically. You know, a lot of these athletes, how do I keep my mileage up? How do I keep, um, you know, in t touch with the strength workouts? But how do I mentally get up again and again and again um, for all of these races? Because it's not easy. You've, you, look, when the year started, you circled the NCAA champs on your calendar. Right. And then if you have a good performance there, you extend it to USA's and then beyond that, and then possibly Worlds or, or Olympics or whatever it is. And then there's still opportunities to make more money. Diamond Leagues, just races with good prize money. Yeah. And so, you know. It, it very quickly goes from just being a fun thing you do with your friends, your roommates in college, to all of a sudden, um, you know, you got, you got bills. You got yeah. bills to pay, and you do what's necessary. And so oftentimes what happens is by September, you are so mentally exhausted. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and I think that, you know, I guess to the start of the inquiry was what, what's, what do they have to learn most? And yeah. That's it right there. How do you do it? Especially, it's a different atmosphere here, and the, you're not racing for your team. Your coach probably isn't here. Your agent might not be here, and so it's just you. You mm -hmm. you are staying with a host family who, you know, hopefully is invested in your performance. That's a, okay. That's another element of you know races like this and the Sir Walter Myler that that I love is that uh, these athletes come into towns like you know Falmouth. And, you know, yes, there are hotels, but the way that they bridge that gap between, you know, the road race uh, community and the just the recreational runners is by putting these pro runners into the homes of locals for uh, for a couple days. And so, you know, those uh, those families have a horse in the race, basically, that they get so fired up at, about. And then you get a year's worth of pride and bragging rights to all the other host families. They're like, oh, yeah, last year I hosted the champion. And maybe the, they sign you to be the, the, the champion's uh, uh, host again next year. So, um no, I mean, I, I love that element to it, too, because then, you know, they bring out every member of the family to the track, their family, their, their, their friends. And so uh, it also, you know, leads to this connection that possibly this athlete comes back next year because, like, you know what? I had a great experience, a great time with that family, and I promised them I'd be back. I'm back. Yeah, you know, I, I think I told you the story off air beforehand when I was here in 2016. Uh, a couple of us had the same host family, and I'll keep them anonymous for their sake, but, you know, wife signs up. For the host family, 
the husband has no idea who we are, what we're there for. All of a sudden, we're in his house eating his food. A couple other teammates who just, they had enough bedrooms, and it was like, do you want to stay here? All of a sudden, we had all four of us. It was me, Colby, Johnny, and Ford all staying in this host family's house, and he wasn't going to come to the race. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that morning, we're like, you got to come to the race. We're going we're gonna to go one, two, three, four. And he's like, ah, oh, fine. Like, if you guys promise me you can go one, two, three, four, I'll come. And we ended up going one, two, three, four in that race. And he was the first person. It was like we ran into his arms at the finish line. And immediately we had won him over. And he was all in. And I'm sure he's a diehard track fan now to this day. And, you know, the next day or that evening, we actually went then to his. He's a, a local restaurant owner. Went to his family's bar restaurant. And he put up the Olympics on the big screen. And so we had all the athletes there hanging out, watching. He's taking us around to all the tables, feeding us for free, free beers because we're his athletes. Can we go there after this? We maybe can. We'll see if he remembers us. But that was the night which we had all of the athletes there hanging out in the post-game after party. And on the big screen, Centrowitz won gold. Mm, that's amazing. And it was so cool to be able to share that moment with all of the other athletes. Mac was there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so we were there hanging out, watching, celebrating. The next morning we wake up, he gets us on the boat and drives up to the start line for the road race. So we got dropped off via boat. At the start of the at famous the start, seven mile. At the start of the seven mile, the cops are yelling at him saying, you can't do this, you can't do this. We <laughs> haven't done this since 9-11. This is not a thing. And so we still somehow we get up and he drops us off at the start of the race and then we ran it. Amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. That's the power of the local community here at Falmouth. All right, we have our women's race now. Look Hanging at out. the shades on Nikki Hiltz. <laughs> I mean, we have lots of shaded athletes here right now. Before this race starts, please, if you are in the chat and you are watching this, share on Twitter, share on Instagram, let people know. I know text it's a rolling a friend, schedule. Text your mother and be like, hey, mom, tune into this. This is about to be really cool. Do us a favor. Subscribe. S -s -s share. <laughs> Let the people know that the Falmouth Elite Mile is about to be live. Just the women's and the men's race. Quick action of some track and field. This is going to be fun. And, you know, I just wish I knew what that conversation was like beforehand and if Nikki was able to convince anyone to, to help take them out. So... Shout out to some of the people we have here in the chat. We've got Frank Lara, who's racing tomorrow, tuned in uh, to, to watch the, the mile races. We've got Allie Feller, the host of the Alley on the Run show. Shout out to everyone in the YouTube chat. Drop your predictions. Who do you think is going to win this race? We've got Kayla Edwards, Katie Follett, Sadie Henderson, Nikki Hiltz, Carissa Nelson, Ellie Shea, Molly uh, Sugro. We've got Karina Vilhoon and Melissa Lodge. Such a fun field. Someone who I'm, I'm really interested in is Molly Sugro. I just feel like she's been a little under the radar, and people don't realize how quick she's been running. I mean, the, the 1500 best of 403 indicates mm -hmm. that we're about to see something nice uh, in terms of personal best, because I, I say only, only because she has run 403, but 403 and 431 are not equivalent. And so I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on Molly, and you know, always a, an athlete that is willing to, to go and take a risk. I can see her being one of those who say, you know, I'm not intimidated by Nikki's 421. I'll go. They uh, just introduced Sadie Henderson, another person to possibly watch here. It had a really strong season, 441 for the mile, representing the Adidas Atlanta Track Club Elite. One of my favorite professional That's track clubs. That's your favorite clubs. team. Did you finally get your shirt? I got uh, I got more shirts than I know what to do with. But wow. Sadie, you know, she's a 158, 800 meter runner. The thing is, there's not a lot of community 800. So mm -hmm. at this point in the season, if uh, if you can do it and you're an 800 mid D runner, you're you're running miles now. Kira D'Amato's in the YouTube chat right here. Coach Frank Gagliano is watching. Hopefully, Kira and Allie and Frank, all these people watching, are pumping right now on Twitter, letting people know that 
They can watch the Falmouth Elite Miles on the Sidious Mag YouTube channel live and free. I texted my mom just now. First time I texted her in a couple of days. The gun is up. And away we go. And immediately it looks like Kayla Edwards takes a, a quick few s fast steps out of the blocks. But it, our pace are there. Uh, who's going to get in behind them? Nikki in third, right behind Kayla and our rabbit. Eyes on them. Molly looks like she is sliding into fourth place. Now, again, in this field, we've also got Ellie Shea, the high schooler from Belmont High School, who's run 440 for the mile. They were about 34 seconds through 209, so exactly where we want to be. We're, we're keeping our eyes on that meet record of Susie, Famer ha Susie Favor Hamilton of 425, set in 2002. It's been 20 years, people. That was the first year, I think, that we've, we had a women's mile. It's time we get a, a new meet record. It's time to break that. And as we Let's approach 400 meters, we are seeing 68 seconds through 409. Kayla Edwards up front, Nikki, Molly right behind her. They can't lose track of the rabbit here. Hopefully that rabbit takes a look over the shoulder, sees that there starts to be some disconnect, but I am anticipating the possibility that Nikki, if a gap does open up, that they might go around Kayla. Kayla working hard to close that gap. Nikki looks comfortable. Molly as well, clipping their heels. 600 meters in 142. People forget Kayla Edwards won the 2016 NCAA indoor title in the mile. Finished second in the 800 at the 2020 US Indoor Championships behind Ajay Wilson who I believe just happened to win at the NACAC championships moments ago. And the question now is, are we going to have the rabbit much beyond 800 meters as Kayla Edwards will be the one whose responsibility will be deferred to? Let's get an 800 split here with two laps to go. We appear to be 216, 217. So it's, you know, it's not slow. We're still in range of the possibility of seeing that me record go down. But if we're going to do it, we're going to have to do it quick. But more importantly, we have one hell of a race on our hands. I think that's the best part to this is that it's not one person running away. No one's pulling a Daniel Roman chuck here. This is a, a, a true race that we've got on our hands. Do not sleep on Molly Sugro there in fourth place in the headband. And in fifth place, can we get an ID on that? Athlete there, is that... That's, I believe that might be Karina, Karina Bilhoon, who's run 429 for the mile, 408 for 1500, competed at the University of Arkansas, currently training with the Mammoth Track Club, been on, on, on a pretty good run this summer. You know, we see a, a real possibility of an upset here. Uh, maybe some in the, the pre-race chats thought that Nikki was going to run away with it, but we've got plenty of company here. As we approach 400 meters to go, on the clock, we see about 326, 327. And we've still got four women in contention. Kayla Edwards leading the way. She's done the majority of the work, but Nikki, they're making a move with 320 meters to go. And how decisive will it be? Kayla is trying to respond. They showed off the kick at Sir Walter, and this is a great way to follow it up. Karina seeing if she can get around Kayla to try to match this, but right now it does seem to be the Nikki Hilt show with 200 meters left on the clock, 358. We are rolling. There is that bonus for a sub 430 mile. Are they gonna be able to do it? They closed super hard at the Sir Walter mile there just a couple weeks ago and with 100 meters to go, it is all Nikki Hilt's eyes on the clock. Nikki Hilt's 
finalist at the 2019 World Championships this summer has been showing that she's getting right back into that form. They what, are getting back into that form. What will they do here as they cross the finish line under 430? Woo. It looks like Nikki Hiltz just ran 428, 429 for the mile. They were absolutely booking it with 300 meters to go. Nobody could match that final move from Nikki Hiltz. Quite the summer of miles for Nikki. Victory here today. Victory at the Sir Walter Miler. Victory at the Pittsburgh Mile in 428. Ran 421 at the Guardian Mile. Fifth Avenue Miles, the, the next stop. Quite an impressive summer. The Stunner Shades. What a great race for Nikki. The chat is going wild. Everyone's so excited for them. Now, what Nikki would really love right now is for those people in the chat to sign up for the Pride 5K, which is coming up in October. So, I signed up there. yesterday officially. I signed up a couple weeks back. It could be the mullet, too. Nikki was rocking the mullet in, at, at Sir Walter. The thing that I want to see now is I want to see them come out and really race the seven miler. That's something <laughs> that a few athletes have done before. And it's always so impressive. It's like, if you can do that double, come out, run the mile. You know, I think finish top three in the mile, come out and be top ten in the road race. There's only a few people who have pulled that feat off. Yeah, Mason Furlick, I believe, two years ago uh, attempted the, the double. Like Jordan it, McNamara had a really impressive one once before. Mason was fourth, I think, after like a sixth place showing in the mile. So, yeah. I mean, it'd be, it'd be cool. What a great race. Great race. And so I think we'll have the results populated. We on do the have the official times there. It doesn't finish until September something. That bonus for all athletes under 430, I think Nikki 428.93, Kayla Edwards 430.55 in second. So Nikki walks away. If we crunch those numbers, the five thousand dollars plus the winner sub four thirty for another thousand six thousand dollars. Woo! Nice day. I just dropped a link for people to sign up for the Pride Five K into the YouTube chat. You know, Nikki was telling the story after the Sir Walter Mile about the fact that they had some unexpected. Uh, budget needs. That's right. For the Pride 5K come up, you know, closing the roads. Closing the roads in Flagstaff was going to cost a little bit more money than they had anticipated, and so, you know, with 200 meters left, thought about the the big $5,000 bonus for breaking the North Carolina state record. They found that gear. They went out and they did it, and they, you know, immediately found the problem to their budget needs. <laughs> Some more help here, but I do think that if enough people sign up. For the Pride 5K, that we're not gonna, you know, I, I think we can let Nikki keep all that. It's, mm -hmm. They earned it. And as we prepare for the men's race, I do just once again want to give a big shout out to our executive producer and uh, the you quarterback know, of the this quarterback coverage. of this coverage right now, Mac Fleet. Uh, you know, one-time NCAA champion. <laughs> um, you know, we've, he's never done this before. The, previously, when we had streamed races, it was a hired-out production crew. Uh, today, it is all Mac running around. And, you know, I, I don't think... I can confidently say that the Falmouth Mile has never been streamed like this before. And it's a great event. And, you know, I think more people are watching it now than any previous year certainly those early years pre-internet and uh, you know it, what a great way to pre-game your saturday night before you know right now you know everyone's having a good time they're thinking where are we going tonight when are the cabs getting here let's yeah. watch them track first we got more than 600 people tuned in right now before the start of the elite men's mile people are asking can you donate 
you're asking to donate to the Pride 5K, it's by signing up for the race. If you're asking to donate to Sidious Mag, our Venmo is always open. The, At Sidious Mag. You know, Chris, we had previously done a little bit of a preview of the men's race, but we, we have so many more viewers here with us now. So let's just quickly run through some of the, the pre-race heavy favorites that we have. I think one name that we have kept a close eye on is Colby Alexander. He's been runner-up here a couple times before, but, you know... He finished with some guy named Kyle Merber a couple years ago. Yeah, but it, I haven't run 333 <laughs> for 1,500, something that Colby has done. And after, you know, some time spent injured earlier in the season is starting to round out into form, but do want to keep a close eye on the Under Armour quad mm -hmm. here. You know, Jack Ancy... Ran really great. Uh, you know, he he just ran a personal best in the mile versus uh, Eric Holt in Westchester. You know, Brooklyn was a huge race for him as well. And so the Australian, fresh out of Illinois State University, someone we're keeping a close eye on. Vince Ciatti, you know, he's run 334 for 1,500. Uh, then, personally, you know, we love David Ribich, close friend of Sidious Mag. Mm-hmm. I think a guy who is now in this transition up to the 5K, maybe slowly, but you know yeah. he he was close here last year, right? I think 2019. 2019, yeah. he almost won, and so there's some unfinished business on the track. Um, we do have Paul Ryan. He got the win at the Festival of Miles Festival. a couple uh, months back when uh, I remember a lot of eyes were on Gary Martin that race, and it's like Paul Ryan making a statement, it's like remember. I'm, I'm a pro. I'm in this one. I'll take it. So a 355 miler in his own right. So, you know, I do think from a you know, storyline perspective, is, is one of the Under Armour guys going to win? You also have Adam Fogg here and Willie Fink, both from Under Armour Baltimore. Adam Fogg with the Fog Dog straight the to the top dog. with the base drop. I pace think too hot. You can't keep up when he heat, heats up and takes the lead. All you see is Drake University, so it's time to subscribe for the best alive and go stride for stride with the Batman pride. It's Adam Fogg coming at you with the top dog exclusive. Adam Fogg exclusive. <laughs> I don't know what that was. but um, And then, is it Australia? It's, it's 7... 30 a.m. I think in Melbourne right now. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And have some track with your morning coffee. Uh, get a flat white and pull up <laughs> because Australia has four athletes in here, including Jai Edwards, who's run 349 for the mile joining us. Yeah, he was the Australian national champion in 2021, competed at the Tokyo Games. Uh, you know, unfortunately, he had a later start to the season uh, and then uh, wasn't able to really come back to form in time to compete at the World Championships, but is, is rounding into form right now for, for these uh, summer miles. So this is one of our last final calls to action as the men are walking up to the start line. If you are joining us here, please, please, I'm begging you, those watching at home, drop this link in your group chat. Tweet it out. Instagram. You can delete it in an hour if you want. But, like, let people know that the Falmouth Elite Men's Mile is on the, the track about to start. These athletes are going for somewhere between five to $7,500 in prize money. I mean, a seriously, seriously deep prize pool of... Um, you know, potential paydays for these professional athletes. Yeah, I, people tuning in from all over the world right now. So, I, I heard previously that our rabbit, who you know, one of the race organizers, yes, uh, a Columbia guy, Caleb, Caleb is going to be taking them out in 155. So he's he's spoken he's nervous very openly. As hell. Yeah, he's spoken very openly uh, to us about how he's going after uh, one of your records at Columbia. I, is he he can't be going after my fifteen hundred record. <laughs> no, that not that one. A mile? Maybe mile. Um, get the mile first, and then think about the fifteen hundred. Uh, you know, but one fifty five here in the middle of summer training. No joke for him. I can't mm -hmm. imagine he's you know ripping two hundreds right now. But a lot of pressure on the line for him. There's Jai Edwards, 333, 349. One of the surprise breakout stars from Australia last year, the Australian champ, unfortunately hasn't had the season of health and uh, everything that he's wanted, but he's here now. Mm -hmm. And 
Colby Alexander there getting introduced. I know there was a big call, especially by the, the City of Smag faithful, to get this man a contract after the indoor we season did that it. he had. And we did it. Look at him. Sign right there. Looks with, great uh, as Adidas kid. The Adidas kid. He uh, still training with uh, Empire Elite under coach John Troutman and Tommy Noheli. And there's Rory Hunter, the Australian. Just ran his personal best of 356.26 at the Sir Walter Myler and finished finishing seventh place. That's a race where 12 guys broke four. He also finished third at the 2021 Australian National Championships in the 1500, and he actually set his uh, 1500 PR of 336 in France last year. The thing that I love about having a guy like Colby in this race is you just know it's it's not gonna lag. Mm -hmm. There, you know, the temperature has dropped from 83 degrees to 81 degrees. the The wind is starting to calm down a bit, and I think uh, we've got a, a real nice opportunity here to, you know. Make a name for yourself. Yeah. We got a lot of people in this chat watching. And you know, we were asking earlier, what's on the line here? A lot of bragging rights. In addition to that, too, like I think you, what you can also think of this is like a good performance here. Like I know that there's a lot of guys coming back from Commonwealth and Worlds and Euros that will compete at the Fifth Avenue Mile. But if you can add something like, I just won the Falmouth Elite Mile in, you know, I'm still talking about it eight years later. Yeah, later, that, the like, fact that help, I won. It could help your case to get into something like Fifth Ave, which is which is tough to make sometimes. I didn't know we had this capability, but shout out to Michael M for yeah. donating 199. Respect to Mac Fleet and the broadcast team. Um, thanks. That's at the super chat function, so you could donate straight via YouTube, or you could hit us on Venmo, which a couple people have. I I'll thought this was free track, names. but Michael, it's, it's 199 for you. Thank you. We'll get Mac a nice can of soda with that. <laughs> and then another Australian, Mick Stanovesk. I just saw him compete at the Brooklyn Mile uh, not too long ago. He's had a good summer of, of racing. Comes into Falmouth with a mile PR of 356 set in Dublin. And earlier this season finished fourth at the Australian SOPAC Championships in the 1500. The gun is up. All right, chat, let us know. Are you Team Fog Dog, Team Colby, Team Willie? Let us know. Let's get this thing going. And our rabbit is out looking for 155 first 800 meters. As the athletes are finding their way around the bend, you know. Where are we going to line up here? Who's the one? Who's going to be taking it? Seems like Colby's doing his thing where we saw this during the indoor season a little bit. Likes to sit in that in that second, third position. I think that's Jai Edwards in second place on the far side of the track. He's a, he, a 349 miler in his own right. He has no problem going out a bit quick. As the athletes are starting to find their spot, you don't want to run any extra steps. You, you know, you're hugging these cones as closely as possible as they approach 400 meters here. As they come through in 409 in about 58, 59 seconds. Okay. So exactly where we want to be if we can keep this rolling. That's 409. And Colby looking very relaxed, just staring down our man, Jai Edwards, who is our race leader. And it looks like fourth on our screen there, making it one, two, three for Adidas. That is Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. So this is Adidas versus Under Armour dual meet going on right now as they come through 600 meters, just a bit under 130. Now, again, to remind you about Jai Edwards, he's got a 349.27 mile personal best. Ran that at the 2021 Oslo Dream Mile. He just finished sixth at the Sir Walter Miler. So he's got some momentum on his side right there. As the athletes approach the 800 mark, a rabbit is pulling off, and it is all Jai. We're looking at 159 for 809. Is someone going to come around and help? 
Or is he going to be doing this third lap all by himself? They are just a hair under a four-minute pace here. We, we know th these guys can close hard. We know these guys can close as they're starting to, to pack up a little bit. That's the Fog Dog in fourth, swinging to lane two. But I think that's Jack Ansey. Yeah. A few inches down below the Fog Dog with 1,000 meters coming through 230. Now, J Jack Ansey's also had a pretty good summer. He just set his personal best at the Westchester Mile. He finished second to Eric Holt there. That's where he ran 355. 500 meters to go. They're still letting the team Adidas lead the way as it seems to be Paul Ryan coming up 400 meters. Here's the bell. We are three flat. That was a 60.1. Foggs is in second place. Jog dogs straight to the front. Jai was able to respond when he got past. But right now, Paul Ryan making a strong push from far out. Our man Jack Ansey swinging to lane two. And in the bright green, that's David Ribich closing hard, who's got, who has a second place finish from 2019. And he said, I don't, didn't come back here to finish second again. Five guys are all together. This could be anyone's race. We've got Ryan, we've got Fogg. Edwards, Ansey, Ribich swinging out into lane two. Has he left it too late? Our early leader, Jai Edwards, going into lane two to see if he can respond, but Paul Ryan feels like he has it here as he sees it. It's gonna be close, but it's all Paul Ryan as he crosses the finish line in 356. A burning last lap from Paul doing it up front the hard way. Paul Ryan, your 2022 Falmouth Elite Men's Mile champion. You know that feels good. Thumbs up from the big fella right there. Notch to victory and a personal best of the Festival Miles of the this summer now adds the Falmouth Mile title to his resume. Training with Terrence Mahone, the Gold Coast, over in California, Paul Ryan, just an unbelievable performance here. He, he sensed that the pace was starting to slow and he knew that he was a guy that was in 356 shape. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? He went out and he ran 356. An absolute barn burner of a last lap there. Thank you everyone to coming in and joining us here today. Shout out to James McCurdy here, chipping in with 50 bucks on the super chat. So glad that you guys were able to come join us here today for the Falmouth Mile ahead of the seven mile road race tomorrow that you're gonna be able to watch on NBC Boston 10 and then after the festivities in the seven miles, you around can- Around 10 a.m. Around 10 a.m., join us in the beer tent. We're gonna be doing an after the final lap post-game show. We're gonna be interviewing some of the athletes, some that you may have seen compete here today in the mile, the, those that are coming back and racing tomorrow. And then of course, some all-time greats. Mm -hmm. We're good. Running a 428. I think we'll have the results populate on the screen. We've got Thank you, Mitchell German, $20. Shout out, Mitchell German. We've got six guys who broke four minutes for the mile. The results are right there on your screen. Paul Ryan, 355.91. They're up. Yeah, they're up. Yeah. You want to sign off? Oh, and look who has made an appearance in the booth. We had a couple of people requesting to see if Alicia would make her Sidious Mag YouTube debut, and here she is, the Alicia one Merber. The number fan in the house, the only screen time she's allowed is when it's track. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's, those are strict rules. We've got, so subscribe to the Sidious Mag YouTube channel for Alicia. She wants to talk into the mic. Alicia, what do you want to say? You had a good time watching the races today? We did, Chris. Yeah. Well, so uh, once again, you can join us tomorrow after the final lap, after the Falmouth Road Race. You after can, 10 a.m. 
You can tune in. You can watch. We can eat the microphone together. <laughs> you can watch tomorrow on NBC Boston 10. Yep. And we'll be on the ground covering the race. But thank you so much for coming out and joining us today from Falmouth High School. And if you missed any moment of the action, as soon as we sign off, you'll be able to replay this at any point uh, during the broadcast. But uh, Chris Chavez here with Kyle Merber, Leisha Merber, on behalf of the A6 Falmouth Road Race and the 50th anniversary, thanks for joining us here for the Falmouth Elite Miles. We'll see you next time. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>